Hi, I'm Joe Keefe. I'm the editor of Marine News and Maritime Logistics Magazine. Uh, I'm here at the uh, SMM 2016 show on Maritime Reporter TV. Joining us today is Sander Jacobs, of, uh, the sales director on international, of International Marine Stationary and Drilling at GE Transportation. How are you today, Sander? Uh, very well, Joe. It's been a great show uh, to date and uh, happy to be here. Great. Good traffic over at the booth? More than expected. Yeah, very good for us. Uh, for me, it actually was the first SMM, but our company has been here for uh, the sixth time now. And what I hear from my colleagues is that uh, despite the overall industry downturn, uh, the traffic has been uh, phenomenal. Uh, high quality discussions, uh, real projects uh, that uh, came on the table. Uh, next to that, of course, the whole socialization, but uh, a very good show. Very good. So let's uh, launch into a few questions here today. So by all accounts, that GE IMO Tier 3, Tier 4 marine diesel engine doesn't need after treatment, and it's been a big success. Tell us how and why. Yeah, it's been uh, a great success. Thank you. Um, we, to date, uh, since the launch, um, we have built up an order book of over 60 units in the marine uh, sector um, and in the locomotive sector where we deploy this technology as well. Uh, we have uh, over 600 units, so it's been a great success, good adoption. Uh, even so, in regions where not necessarily the regulation forces you to be compliant with the emission standards that this engine achieves. People are, people are trying to be proactive, in other words. Proactive, in other words, yes. Um, so uh, that's, we, we feel that is a good success. Uh, we hadn't expected that. We thought that when you launch this technology in a, in a time that the industry is actually going down, uh, the adoption is obviously from those areas where it is mandated. Uh, it was a big surprise that we were able to sell it in areas where it's uh, not mandated yet, but people are proactive. Um, very pleased to see that because the marine industry... Uh, may not have the best image when it comes to environmental impact, and, and those companies that actually did adopt this um, uh, prove the industry different. Okay, great. In fact, one of the uh, recent installations is the uh, Basto One Ferry, which is running in Norway since April. They've had some expected savings, as you, as you promised them, but they've also had some good surprises. Tell us about a couple of those surprises. Yeah, this uh, project was a repower, um, so they took out uh, the old engine, uh, refurbished the whole ferry, and uh, put in our uh, latest emission technology. Um, like you said, uh, primarily to meet uh, the emission uh, standards that they, uh, that, uh, that they wanted to meet, uh, fuel savings that they could obtain uh, given, the, given the latest technology. But on top of that, they um, experienced much more uh, rider comfort uh, in terms of vibration. Um, the old uh, configuration caused significant vibrations in the vessel since this, uh, this, this new technology is installed. Uh, much more rider comfort. Uh, they had no visible smoke uh, throughout all the different load cycles that you can put on it, um, which, which, uh, which was a pleasant surprise to them. Great. So... We have a marine contributor, uh, uh, Bob Kunkel, and uh, recently he did an ATB project on the Great Lakes, and he told us in July, quote, we tried to develop a competitive process with other engine selections for our customer, but we found that the GE engine was our only choice, really, for the total without a total of the, uh, redesign of the tugboat. That's high praise. Um, are you aiming hard at the tug and workboat market with the new engines? Um, yes, uh, particularly those, those instances like you exactly mentioned, where you already have a design um, that is built around the existing IMO2 emission norms or in the US and the prior EPA norms. Um, our engine um, meets this in a very, very compact footprint, so no redesign necessary. Uh, if you take the alternative technology of taking the existing engine and then um, put an after-treatment system in, uh, you increase the footprint, have to make uh, changes to your design to accommodate that. Uh, you're sometimes talking about uh, one and a half to three cubic meter per installed megawatt of, of space that you need incremental with, with such systems, let alone the urea tanks. Um, so yes, it is a segment. Uh, that we're focusing on, along with, uh, you know, river cruisers, along with uh, expedition cruise vessels, um, uh, the offshore support uh, segment, 
although that is in, in, in a pretty down uh, cycle now. Um, but yeah, we target uh, a broad range of vessels um, with this technology. Okay. So the concept for this uh, tier three uh, IMO and tier four uh, EPA model, are you going to size it up uh, and down for both uh, the blue water and the brown water sector, or uh, uh, is there going to be a, a limitation on size? Well, we, um, we just complemented our portfolio. We introduced the first engine uh, in the two to three megawatt category, then we went up to the four and a half uh, megawatt category. Uh, we now complemented the product uh, line with an engine uh, in the 1700 to 1900 kilowatt, uh, which is coming out uh, next year. Our first deliveries will be around Q2 2017. Okay. Um, and then we can cater the whole range of 1700 kilowatt to about 4700 kilowatt. Uh, no immediate plans to extend uh, with this technology uh, platform much beyond that, but we're reviewing uh, whether we go and, and, and adopt maybe um, maybe other engine platforms to address lower power segments. Terrific. Exciting stuff. Listen, I know you're busy at the show, and I really appreciate you stopping by to see us today. Thank you so much, and uh, good luck with the engine. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Thank you.